It's time for Lo-Fi Science Class with Mr. Hedgepeth of the Amoeba People. Well, greetings everybody and welcome to Lo-Fi Science Class with Mr. Hedgepeth of the Amoeba People. This is lesson five today. In lesson five, we are now going to be transitioning into Earth science, the Earth. We've uh, given you kind of an overview of the solar system and planetary science and even the history of science, how we have come to learn a lot of the things that we've known in the first four lessons. But now in this fifth lesson, we're gonna get very specific. I've got some high tech props here for the lo-fi science class. Here's, here's a globe that, that as you can see has seen better days. It's seen better days mostly because um, it's existed in my classroom and I'm pretty rough with globes. Um, they're, they're tough, they last for many years, but you've gotta be a pretty tough globe to last in my classroom because globes get used for a variety of things. As you can see, um, what we're gonna be talking about today, continental drift, um, you, you can see I actually started trying to create um, the various plates on this globe and then I realized it was just, it was kind of falling apart so I had to tape it back together. So, you know, for demonstration purposes, um, it, it's fun. And at some point, I promise you in this video, I'm gonna chuck this thing backward over my head and just let it fall. Why? Because I can't help it. That's the truth, okay? So, um, so let's talk about continental drift. Okay, so when we're getting into earth science, um, one of the, the basic components of studying earth science is understanding that the earth has multiple layers. We live on the crust, mm, this nice crusty portion. Um, and of course, underneath the crust, you have the, the mantle. And then deep, deep below the mantle, you uh, basically at the center of the earth, you have the outer core and the inner core. So those are the four basic layers of the earth. It, it gets a little more complicated than that the, the more that you, uh, you know, study the specifics of those various regions. But, uh, but essentially that's it. You've got the crust, the mantle, outer core, and inner core. So, <clears throat> and uh, the inner core is unique because it's solid. And then the outer core is, is molten, you know. Um, so we don't really say liquid when we're talking about temperatures that hot. Um, we tend to say molten because these are metals and rocks that um, are, are viscous and they move and they they flow you know um but um but continental drift okay so how did okay if you just look at a globe here i mean you could see you know south america and africa i mean they they really do just look like puzzle pieces and you know for many many years map makers noticed this um you know people who studied geography people who just simply looked at maps could see that there are parts of the globe that just look like they fit together or maybe they once were together and so it took a German scientist who was not a geologist or anything like that. He was a meteorologist, but his, his name was Alfred Wegener. And uh, he's kind of a hero to the amoeba people because uh, one of the first amoeba people songs ever written was the song Continental Drift. And uh, that's the song I'm going to be doing today um, in this video. And uh, it was inspired by Alfred Wegener. And, and what it was is he, he basically gathered up a bunch of evidence that he felt um, explained that the continents could move over time, slowly, of course. And, um, and he presented this evidence in a book, in a paper, and he presented it, and uh, you know, it was basically rejected. And the main reason it was rejected is because even though he had tons of evidence for why it appears the continents have moved, he didn't have an explanation of the mechanism that caused the continents to move. So for example, he did have fossil evidence. Look at that high tech, huh? That's some high tech props right there. So, so on one continent, you would find an ancient fossilized organism. This is just a tadpole, it's not ancient, but, um, but it's all I had here in the lab. And, and you would find the same, I'm gonna put another tadpole over here. And so you'd have fossils of a dinosaur on the coastline of South America that would match up with the fossils on the coastline of Africa. Same thing with uh, coal deposits and mountain ranges. And when you put these puzzle pieces, say, back together, um, Alfred Wegener, Wegener discovered that these pieces lined up not only just by land, but also what was in the land, the, the mountain ranges and the fossil evidence. And then there's this little tiny, tiny island. Let's see if we can find it up here. Uh, Spitzbergen, there it is. It's a tiny little island up here. He discovered 
um, the fossilized remains of tropical plants. And so he's like, okay, wait a minute, tropical plants, you know, the tropical region, you know, being down here on the globe, how are there fossils of, uh, you know, tropical plants on Spitzbergen? Um, I don't know if that's really how you say Spitzbergen, but that's how I like saying it, Spitzbergen. Okay, so um, on Spitzbergen, uh, I think the rest of this video, if I say that word, I'm gonna have to say it like that. So if you're already annoyed, Sorry. Um, so uh, on Spitzbergen, uh, you had these these fossilized uh, tropical plants, and and Wegner was like, look. The, probably those fossils formed down here in the tropical region and they migrated northward toward the North Pole and that's why we find them there. These, these, um, these fossils here probably died together and then as the continents drifted apart, their fossils moved apart and that's why they match up. So again, the problem was that he couldn't explain what was causing these continents to move and that's essentially why his idea was rejected. Um, now, of course, um, um, in uh, an upcoming video, I'm going to talk about the mechanism that does cause the continents to move. And that was discovered by a cartographer named Marie Tharp. And Marie Tharp's discovery, uh, which we'll, like I said, in, in the next episode we'll talk about, um, that led to the development of plate tectonic theory. And plate tectonic theory is what causes the continents, uh, uh, it explains what causes the continents to move. Okay, so um, I know that was a really, really fast kind of, you know, quick overview of all the work that Wegner did, but the song kind of covers that. So we're, we're just going to get into the song from here on out, and I'm going to throw this globe, and who knows? Pretty soft landing. It sounded like it uh, hit something soft first. Um, that was very anticlimactic. I apologize. It should have been a much bigger bang than that, but uh, who knows? Maybe next episode. Okay, let's get into the song. <clears throat> okay. So here is something that Alfred Wegener never got to see. He never got to see that the theory of continental drift would be supported by the theory of plate tectonics. And plate tectonics is the mechanism that explains how the continents drift. So when you see all these plates, all of Earth's crust broken into these multiple plates, what you're seeing is the explanation that Wegener did not have. If he had that and, and he had enough evidence for it, uh, then maybe he wouldn't have been uh, ridiculed for his idea of continental drift. But that took 30 years later, 30 years after he died, um, for, for that information uh, to, to see the light of day to be uncovered by scientists. And so um, as sad as that may be, um, the idea here is this. Um, convection currents in Earth's mantle which is extremely hot. The hot particles rise, they get close to the crust, which, which is a little bit cooler. The, the cooler particles now, as they, as they cool off, they begin to sink a little bit. And as they sink a little bit, they get warmed up again and they rise again because the warmer particles are more diffuse and they rise. Cooler particles are more dense and they sink. And it creates this thing called a convection current. And the convection currents in the mantle are what bump up against the crust, essentially, which over time cause earthquakes, volcanoes, and of course, continental drift. So poor Wegner just didn't live long enough to see it. But we're gonna tell his story anyway, because we remember you, Alfred. This one's for you. In the year of 1910, there was a scientist whose name was Alfred Wegener. Look just like pieces of a broken puzzle. By 1915, he called it continental drift. It caused a rift with his fellow scientists who sang, Ha ha, Alfred Wegener, you are a crazy man. Ha ha, Alfred Wegener, you are a crazy little man. You don't have a theory. Ha ha, 
I've been thinking you are a crazy man. Ha ha! I've been thinking you are a crazy little man. In the year of 1930, on an expedition to Greenland. Got caught in a blizzard, in a blizzard, a blizzard. When they finally found him, it was much, much too late. And they buried him in an icy mausoleum. A new idea came to life. Play chick tectonics, chick chick play chick tectonics, chick to change the way geologists saw the world and brought continental drift back to life. Now everybody sings, Yeehaw! Alfred Baker, you are a brilliant man. Yeehaw! Alfred Baker. Okay, Continental Drift. Thank you, Alfred Wegener. And um, we're sorry that you did not live to see your ideas, um, you know, put forth by the scientific community at large. But um, anyway, thank you, and I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode of the Lo-Fi Science Class. And in our next number of episodes, we will be continuing to learn about Earth science and how we know what we know about plate tectonics, earthquakes, volcanoes, and the like. Until next time, everybody, onward! Spitzbergen!